blocks of what we're calling today AI is really this algorithmic work, this analysis work, this predictive algorithm work. Um, and that's been going on for a very long time in cardiology. And it's why I think that cardiology, just like radiology, is a great place for us to start really creating some of the infrastructure for, for what we actually call collaborative intelligence rather than artificial intelligence. Artifice means deceit. You know, telling someone it's deceitful intelligence doesn't help us gain trust, right? We call it collaborative intelligence also because, as you mentioned earlier, a little bit about ethics, it's important to us that you recognize what is the data that is going into the AI algorithm and what are we doing with the data that comes out? Are we looking for bias? Are we understanding that people are included? Are we applying it to the right population? Have we included everybody or have we worsened the digital divide? So those are kind of thoughts that really need to go into understanding how to work with a variety of different AIs. The reason I say that is I don't think the use of collaborative intelligence will be limited to just the imaging specialties or the electrophysiologists, even though it may be, you know, the oldest there or out in most force. I think population health is a really important area. Cardiovascular disease by and large, especially atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, is largely preventable. It does have some genetic underpinnings, but there is a lot of work that we can do if we can identify at-risk populations and help them understand how to care for their health better. If we can reach people in the communities where they live and do this kind of work, in order to do that, we really need to think about what's the information we put in, because a lot of the information that currently exists in large data systems, especially the United States, um, my colleagues will tell me, you know, have some structural racism built into it. Um, or or you're just leaving populations out. South Asians are not in a lot of these databases and all these numbers, but we know they carry a bulk of the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease in the world. And so making sure that we have the right data going into these algorithms is important. Population health is the area where I think we can make the biggest difference by helping identify early, educate. Um, but to do that, we really have to think about that side of, of bias. We have to think about the ethics of how we're using it. And if we're going to do it at a population level, we have to think about privacy and security. And so all of these things come into play. And, and it's partly why we can't do it alone as either cardiologists or radiologists. Um, there are several collaborative groups right now. The AMA is running one. The CTA is running one. The Consumer Technology Association for kind of industry and subspecialties the American Medical Association for Subspecialties, um, and of course at the governmental level, there, there are several groups working on it. So I think we all do need to come together for the right governance overall. And then each institution that's working on it needs their own particular governance though, because each of our systems are a little different and we need to know where our loopholes may be. And so I think all of that's really important. I think it's important to recognize that with the broad strokes that have already been offered to us, right, via um, all of our governmental organizations, right, ranging from White House, ONC, et cetera, um, and even uh, globally in the European Union, et cetera, I think it's important to recognize that at one's own institution, you really do need to do the same thing that I was just talking about kind of with the FDA, which is we want to promote the use and the development and the advancement of digital health technologies, of the use of AI. And at the same time, we want to be able to have the guardrails present to help people understand how to implement, how to study, and most importantly, how to measure the consequences of what is happening and quickly adjust them. And that's the key, and that's hard. Again, I'm going back to where I started in the beginning. We don't have infrastructure for feedback on technology as part of how we practice clinical medicine. And so that's a new area that many people are kind of working in. And what I would love for us to do kind of as the ACC, ADOC together and others is, is really showcase that um, and showcase successes as well as failures. Hey, we tried this and it is not the way to go. At least it wasn't for us. Um, those conversations are really important. Um, so you'll note that you'll even see from our, our journals, from the journal of the ACC and the, and the subset of journals we have, um, our editor and I have talked quite a bit about 
the more information we get out there about what we're all trying and our being willing to submit and publish successes, challenges, failures, that's really important for the conversation on then how to develop governance better. So it's not just write things on paper and follow it. We have to evolve at the same rate that digital technologies and AI is evolving. Um, and therefore we need to talk to each other about it frequently, um, often, and, and really transparently. Um, and, and I think that's, that's the future of success in governance is this transparent communication.